At 33, Lee Maynard has achieved what most can only hope for. She's a woman living her dreams, helping create a future for young South Africans, affecting social change, creating tomorrow's leaders through a not-for-profit business school that she co-founded just eight years ago. And now Lee's embarked on a new journey into motherhood. Got lovely food for you. It's fish. Don't put those faces. I would pull those faces too. It's fish with apple and peas, Cammy. It's very nice. Fish with apple and peas. It's quite amazing to me that the, the passion I discovered when I was 15 has sustained and even grown. At, at 15, I could never know that I would end up becoming a university and, and that I would know the kinds of young people that I've, I've had the privilege of knowing. I feel like I've lived one full lifetime. I've, I've, I've lived a whole dream and seen it. And now with, with Camille's birth, I feel like I've started a second life in a way. I mean, how, how many people get, get two lives in, in one? What do you think being a mother has brought to Lee's life? Balance. I think balance and completion. I think she'd done so much else that she wanted to do. So Lisa, let me show you Camille's room, which also doubles as our library. Of course. <laughs> Um, yeah, these are some of the books that have been special to me over the years. And, and here's a poem that's particularly special to me. It, it speaks about pausing to connect with, with what you love, written by a woman called Mary Oliver. And it's called West Wind Number Two. And she says, You are young, so you know everything. You leap into the boat and begin rowing. But listen to me. Without fanfare, without embarrassment, without any doubt, I talk directly to your soul. Listen to me. Lift the oars from the water. Let your arms rest and your heart and your heart's little intelligence. And listen to me. There is life without love. When you hear a mile away and still out of sight the churn of the water as it begins to swirl and roil, when you hear that, unmistakable pounding. When you feel the mist on your mouth and sense ahead the embattlement, then row. Row for your life towards it. What I've known to work for me and be true is, is to take those times to be quiet, to pause, to, to, to tap back into to what's real and true for me. And then when I hear that voice, I can go off again. sharing this poem with young people too to say wait and find that thing before you begin rowing because otherwise you can exhaust yourself mm. have there been times that you felt like you're rowing for your life oh absolutely when yeah. was the time that you felt you were rowing the most well when when you're in the heat of of pulling together something you love like that very first workshop i ever ran or or tziba you know it's that rowing for something you love but because you, you you know in your heart that now now's the time to go for it row for your life when you know wait discern take some time to be quiet and when you feel that unmistakable pounding then it's worth rowing for your life for that thing which you love and it can be a person a place a project it can be many things <laughs> 